If you are planning to build a web or mobile app, I'm going to show you how to do it much faster and much more effectively by using the MVP approach. So MVP stands for Minimum Valuable Product and it's a great way to build not only web and mobile apps, but also digital business around them. The idea of MVP is also close to the iteration cycle, which means that you take the core functionality of your app, this essence, and you arrive to the market without any additional functionalities. And this way you don't have to spend too much investment on things that nobody's gonna use at all. So one of the main benefits of using the MVP approach is that you can immediately get a really good feedback straight from the users about your app. Another great benefit of using the MVP approach is the one related to investment, as you don't have to invest in all the functionalities at the beginning. You might already know that one of the reasons why startups fail is the lack of product market fit. So now your main goal is to build like really rough version of your app to arrive to the market as fast as possible and check how many users you can attract. If you will find enough users to make it a sustainable business, that means your idea is worth implementing. So let's have a look on all the benefits of using the MVP approach. First is obviously the idea check that we already mentioned. The second benefit is quality check. Of course, you're going to test your app a lot, but probably users will be the ones that will break it down. And we really recommend you doing that in early stages. A third is a valuable insight. Of course, your friends and family will tell you that everything is fine and your app is great, but are they ready to pay for that? So basically your goal here is to get a lot of useful feedback from people that actually don't really care about your app. So you can check how they're going to use it, how they're going to behave, how they're going to interact with it, what kind of comments they have. The fourth benefit I mentioned already before is the one regarding the investment. By having the MVP, you can immediately show investors how serious you treat your idea. In general, you can also show them that you know what you're doing. You know how to build, test, and try ideas. Another one is maintenance. In other words, if you're gonna build a really big app with a lot of functionalities, you're gonna arrive to the market, but then people not gonna like it that much you have a lot of struggle to adapt to their needs. You might also think that MVP is nothing else than a prototype, but there is still a small difference between them. First of all, the MVP is not focused on the design at all. The second one, MVP, is already able to make you money. It's a bit like the MVP already solves some problem, but the prototype only shows how it's going to solve some problem. But if you wanna get investors on board, it's good to have both the MVP and the prototype. So now you probably want to know how to actually build the MVP. So let's go over this process step by step. Step one, the idea and the market research. When you start a business, it's really helpful to actually ask yourself, what kind of problem are you going to solve? However, there is a big possibility that somebody already had the same idea like yours. In other words, a competition. In this case, it's really helpful to do a good research of the competitors, have a look on how they approach the market, what kind of features they use, uh, how they communicate their app. In other words, you're trying to find some space for yourself in the market, in between the competitors. The idea could be the same, but the way how you approach the idea could make a lot of difference. So now when you know what kind of problem you're going to solve, you're ready to go further and choose the functionalities for your app. As I already said, to start with the MVP, you have to choose the crucial functionality which is not that easy, but this is what we recommend you to do. Take a piece of paper and list all of the functionalities that you're planning to have in your app. Then you can give them points from, for example, one to five on how important they are. After that, leave only the ones with the highest value. If you already choose a crucial functionality and maybe few functionalities around, it's time to make an estimation. It doesn't matter if you go for the agency or a freelancer, you have to have a high level time and budget estimation. The outcome should be all the MVP functionalities together with the product roadmap. After building a roadmap and having all the functionalities of the MVP, your vendor should be able to give you a specific technical recommendations. Sometimes it's a big plus if you can already get some sketches of the most important screens. So now it's about time for the development and there are three famous ways to approach it. First of all, you can find a CTO, this one we recommend the most. You can also find a freelancer that will help you to develop the product. And as the last one, you can go to the agency. But for this, we're gonna make another video and we're not gonna go too much into details. Now it's about time to launch your MVP and as we said before, MVP is an iteration process, so be ready to get a lot of feedback from the market, adapt, 
go again, get more feedback, adapt more and go again. As a few last words, I would like to tell you that doing the market research before you go to the market is a good idea, but it doesn't guarantee success. So I really recommend you to pay more attention to what users are actually doing with your app instead of just trust a data from research. I also recommend you staying open-minded and be ready to change your direction. There is like tons of successful apps in the market that was supposed to be something else at the beginning. And that's exactly what can happen to you. After all, your app might be a good idea for something slightly different that you were thinking at the beginning. So this is it for today. Uh, I hope you got some useful information. If not, let us know on pagepro.co or in the comment. And of course, thanks for watching this video. See you next time.